Hi guys, welcome to my video and my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do it a bit different. We will only have one topic, but I will go a lot more in depth on this topic. Uh, my old videos uh, tend to be a little long sometimes and, and I want to try and, and make shorter videos and hopefully uh, be able to make more of them. Uh, and also just to make it easier for myself to keep the videos short so I don't have to spend weeks creating a video, right? People are asking how I am doing all the procedural stuff in my game. So today I will kind of go in depth on, uh, on the system I have for creating all the procedural clutter that spawns randomly in the dungeon. And I will show you the new assets I have made to make the dungeon even more cool. And before we begin, I have to mention my Discord channel. A lot of awesome people have already joined the Discord and many of them are actually helping me out solving some of my problems for this game. So go and check out the Discord and also drop by my Twitter account where I often uh, show some small gifts of stuff I am currently working on. And of course, go and check out my uh, Patreon. Uh, if you want to support me in the game, these people have already joined my Patreon, awesome guys. So go and check that out also. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a lot of viewers who are watching my videos who are not subscribed. So uh, again, go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would just be super awesome. But let's get the show on the road. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee and some popcorn, and I will tell you the story of how I spawn all the different stuff in my dungeon. Okay, do you remember this old room I showed in the last video where I showed off the random dungeon clutter, uh, which is still super great and, and I love the system. Uh, and I talked about how I needed to uh, do the ceiling uh, clutter. And for the ceiling, the clutter uh, is a bit different because it needs to, you know, hang down in, in different length. So I can have a small hallway uh, that only spawns small uh, ceiling clutter. And then I can have these huge rooms uh, that has enough space to, uh, to spawn some big things hanging from the ceiling. So I kind of reworked the whole system. Well, it's, it's kind of still the same, but I kind of expanded it. Uh, to make rooms for these uh, more special cases uh, clutter. So if we just look at the ceiling clutter right now, you can see I have these uh, huge uh, cages hanging down. And then I have these uh, chains hanging down. And in the small hallways, I have these uh, small wheels in the ceiling. That is three different blueprints that can all spawn uh, different things depending on how big they are. So for example, the small wheel here in the small hallways is only spawning assets that is, uh, is small, that is not in the way, that doesn't take up the whole uh, hallway, right? I think actually this specific blueprint only spawns the small wheel. Then I have the blueprint with these huge uh, cages hanging from the ceiling. Uh, and that means that these are ceiling assets that takes up like three blocks of space, right? So my whole dungeon and rooms are made up of these uh, huge blocks. And this uh, cage blueprint, uh, I can put in assets that will take up three blocks of spaces. So that, that's the big stuff I can put in here. And then I have the chain blueprint here, which uh, I put in asset that can take up two blocks of space hanging from the ceiling. All right, does that make sense? So if we look at the big one with the cage, which is the one that fills up most of this room, this blueprint can spawn a big chain with a cage in it. It can spawn a shorter chain also with a cage in it. And then it can spawn the chain blueprint I have. I will show you that in a second. And then it can also spawn the small wheel that turns. Both are the three things that this blueprint can spawn. All of these blueprints has a chance to spawn the assets, right? So this uh, cage blueprint has a 30% chance to spawn anything 
from the list. I've made an array uh, where I put in the stuff uh, to make up the list for what it can spawn. And I know this one, I want to spawn more chains than I wanted to spawn cages or wheels. So I just put in more chain blueprints than the other blueprints. Okay, let's have a look at the chain blueprints because that's an interesting one. This is the chain blueprints. It has four chains hanging down and each of these chains are blueprint in within themselves. Okay, let me explain. I have made four chain blueprints, which is just one long chain hanging down. I've made four of these with chains in different length. Inside of uh, each of these uh, blueprints, I have a random rotation order. So every time a chain will spawn, it will choose a random rotation. So they're not oriented the same way every time they spawn. What also happens is that each chain will have a chance to spawn. In this case, there's a 50% chance that the chain will spawn. And if it doesn't spawn, it will just destroy itself. So there's no chain. So I put these four chains into one blueprint, which will spawn the four chains. And each chain will have a chance to spawn and a random rotation. And on top of that, the blueprint I put the four chains in will also have a random rotation on it. So the four chains will rotate uh, around randomly every time they spawn. And you might be asking, why didn't I just make one chain blueprint that had all the four length chains in them? So one, one chain can spawn four different chains in different length. Um, and you know, it, it, the problem is that if it chooses to spawn four chains with the same length, it just doesn't look good. So, so if I just use four chains with different length, then uh, I know it will look good, right? Because we don't have two chains with the same length, unless it's the blueprint besides it. I'll get into that. So what happens is that if I fill a room with this big cage blueprint thing everywhere, uh, the whole ceiling, then when I press play, there's a 30% chance that each of these will spawn. And it, if it chooses the chain, there's a 50% chance that each each chain will spawn Jesus Christ man this is hard to explain and I mean it basically just means that I will get rooms with small clusters of chains scattered around or I can get a room with a few chains scattered around or I can get a room with a lot of chains and and cages and wheels turning in the ceiling and and sometimes they kind of cluster up so I can get four or five chain blueprints spawning in the same area and it, it just looks super awesome i think and as you can see i made these uh, cock wheels that are turning which is uh, also the turning is random in which direction it turns and the speed uh, at which it turns and i made some big versions of this wheel too which is super awesome i think which meant that I had to go back and redo the, the way I did the floor clutter. So I want either a big wheel to spawn, and if that big wheel doesn't spawn, then I want the regular things to spawn, like the crates and barrels. So I made a blueprint that kind of had it all in it, and then I set up different spawn chances for the different blueprints that can spawn, right? So I have a big blueprint, that will spawn smaller blueprints that will contain the list of assets which can be spawned. And it all has different percentages of chains to spawn. I know I'm sounding like a complete nutcase when I talk about this, but I mean, that it's just the way it is. I also made two versions of this floor uh, clutter blueprint because I also have these weapons and shields which are standing and leaning against the wall. So I can't use those in places where there's no back wall. So I had to kind of split it up. So I made a blueprint I can place where there's also a back wall. And then I made a blueprint that can be spawned where there's no back wall, right? 
So I take all these different blueprints, I made the same for the walls and things like that. And then I just place them where they fit best, where they're supposed to be placed, right? And when all these blueprints are placed inside a room, uh, it looks completely insane from a working perspective. But when you actually press play and you see these small percent changes of things to spawn, then it looks really good and I get a very different room every time this, these rooms are spawning. And even in these smaller rooms, if the, if the right amount of chains and stuff on the walls are spawning, then it, it just looks really, really good. I, I especially like the chains and you can sometimes when they hang down uh, in front of a small fireplace in the wall and, and they cast shadows around, it looks awesome. And even better, if one of these big wheels are spawning in front of one of these fireplaces, you will see the, the shadow kind of, you know, going around with the wheel as it turns around it. I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's beautiful, man. And I showed this somewhere on, on the internet, some of the new uh, assets I've been making. And <laughs> the comments are always on those uh, wheels turning around like wh why are they there uh, what purpose do they serve and and it doesn't make sense that it just sticks out of the wall and you know all that stuff but i mean to me it just looks absolutely brilliant so um, I, I, I actually i don't care why they're there to me it looks good so i will keep it i might have to turn down the amount and the spawn chains on the wheels because it doesn't make sense that there are wheels everywhere but also sometimes in these huge rooms when there spawns a lot of wheels and you have these big windows in the background and you see the wheel silhouette and all that it just it almost brings a tear to my eye right so it's just beautiful man and what's even more awesome is that this system can fairly easily be expanded with new stuff, new assets. I can even have dead rats and dead spiders uh, getting spawned randomly in different poses. I can even spawn my blood decal asset. So every time a dead rat is spawning, then it will also spawn this blood decal system so there will always be blood around on the walls and on the floor where this dead rat is lying so i mean you see what i'm going at here it, it can it can be expanded and it could be even more awesome than it already is and i think also one of the reasons why i'm so excited about this feature is that it's it's very easy to work with it's just assets that spawns where I put these blueprints and I can easily expand it and it's easy to make assets for it and everything around this system is fairly easy. Only thing I just need to remember uh, the spawn changes uh, on all these things and it's a bit confusing sometimes but uh, it's, it's one of the few features in this game where I haven't banged my head against the wall trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So it's, it's just a joy to work with this system so yeah awesome that is all i have for you this time so uh, yeah let me know in the comments if you like this type of video this uh, shorter more focused video or if you want the the old ones uh, with a lot of random stuff throwing in so you get a little bit of everything um, i'm just trying stuff out so uh, let me know what you think and again thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time